Jesus, for it is with you we have fellowship. We give you thanks, sweet Holy Spirit, we adore you. Thank you, marvelous one. Thank you for all prayers. Thank you for answers to prayers. We give you all the praise for preparing our hearts and minds. Have your way now, Daddy. Speak to us. Thank you for all trials. Thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders. Thank you, Father, for your prophetic power all over the here. We thank you for touching upon our situations today. Thank you for speaking to us prophetically in prophecies. Lord, in your word, in power, and in grace. We we'll love you, Jesus. We we'll appreciate you. Our lives will never be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. <coughs> Amen. 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 Glory be to God in the highest. I want to use this very opportunity to welcome everybody to Kingdom Life Series, the sister first version. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. It's been God. It's been God. It's been God. For 61 times, it's been God. Whatever you are doing and God is with you and is helping you and is granting you victory every time. He's all about him, not about us. So we are all here gathered together to magnify for the consistency of grace. We we'll bless his holy name in Jesus' name. And I want to once again thank God for your lives. We give God the praise the Lord has kept us together as a team and has been doing wonders through our lives. Uh, the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. Um, today is a special day, of course, uh, that we are having because this is the month of March. It's a glorious month. It's been a beautiful month. It's been a wonderful month that God has started. It's a month of grace. And I just want us to trust God for grace and mercy today. Amen. Amen. Come and tell somebody today, I receive grace and mercy. They always say grace, the number of grace is five, and we're in the fifth month. In Hebrews chapter number 4, verse 15, the Bible says, We have not a high priest that cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities, in that he was tempted in all ways, yet without sin. Now, verse 16, the Bible says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, is that we may find grace and obtain mercy in times of need, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in times of need. Now you understand something contextually that the Bible is talking about here. From verse 15, he said, We have not a high priest that cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities, our weaknesses. He's saying that Jesus himself also was tempted. He's talking about character flaws. He's talking about attitudinary weaknesses. He's saying that Jesus himself also was tempted in all ways. In that Jesus himself also was tempted in all ways, yet without sin. What is he trying to let us know? That there is a place for attitudinary weaknesses. There is a place for character flaws. There is a place for inner flaws. And of course, it is when... Please attend to this. It's distracting me. Um, it is when... Glory be to God in the highest. Sorry, we just have some little distractions there, and we're trying to work on it. God bless you. It is when um, these flaws are taken out that a man understands the place of mercy and the place of power. So it is therefore very important that we rely more on grace and mercy to be able to get over flaws and then to be able to triumph, you know, in life. So in this month of grace, in this month the fifth month, I see God granting everybody fresh strength in the name of Jesus. Amen. In all aspects of your life, strength is coming in today. Amen. And you are going to walk with strength in such a way that there is not a single challenge that will be left that you will still see and you will still be saying this is an area of challenge again. You're like, no, 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 no. The power of God is completely obliterating everything in Jesus' name. Grace is giving you wings to fly above challenges in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Lift up your hands and say, I connect with grace. In this month of grace, I connect with fresh grace. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Lord said there is someone here in your teeth area, you have an issue. He said his power is working on it right now. 
by the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, that person is being healed right now. The pains are gone. The stench is gone. The menace departs. And your body is perfectly whole. In Jesus' mighty name. Sweet Holy Spirit, once again, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Moves and waves, part number five. Uh, by the grace of God, we've been dealing with moves and waves, and we've been able to see, you know, very clearly that in life, God has called us onto certain things that we need to discover. That the Bible is, is filled with certain actions, and the consequences or the results of those actions, ladies and gentlemen, are, uh, ladies and gentlemen, our, cons our considerations. We have been looking at different actions in scriptures. One thing you can do that can bring several results, that can bring several impacts, and ladies and gentlemen, that can generate several effects. And we've been able to look at quite a couple of them. We've been able to look at love and the benefits of loving God, loving the saints. We've been able to look at giving, for instance, and the benefits of giving to the poor and all of that. Uh, last month, by the grace of God, we were able to look at the fear of the Lord, you know, among others. And today, by the grace of God, we are marching on to look at another factor that is very crucial even to our Christian, you know, dispositions and our Christian, you know, adventures on the earth. Any man that wants to ever make something great in life, you must understand this particular aspect of your attitudinary disposition and what it takes to be able to fly above it. Of course, I'd open up the floor today talking about grace and how grace helps us above weaknesses. So today, by the grace of God, we are still looking at one factor, one thing you can do that generates several waves. One move, ladies and gentlemen, that generates several waves. In Matthew chapter number 6 and verse 33, the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things which the Gentiles seek for, which nations seek for, shall be added unto you. Therefore, there is one thing to do that makes everything to follow you. So instead of seeking everything one after the other, I mean, how many things do you even want to seek within the time frame that you have, you know, from the womb to the tomb? Everybody has a time allotment. And how many things do you want to seek and achieve within that time frame? But the Bible has given us master keys in scriptures. <laughs> what do I call them? Master keys. So if you just operate the master key, several doors will be open. In actual fact, all doors will be open. I pray today that your home master key is delivered in this service. By the mercy of the Most High God, everybody is going on with their master keys. So the Bible says, seek you first. Just seek this one. Prioritize this in your life. And the Bible says every other thing will start gravitating towards you. Oh, wow, what a master key and what a thing to know. First Timothy chapter number 4 and verse number 8, the Bible says bodily exercise profit little. It said, but godliness is profitable unto all things. So there is just one thing you can do, ladies and gentlemen. There is one attitudinary disposition you can have. Ladies and gentlemen, there is one dimension you can engage. And every other thing, ladies and gentlemen, comes to you profitably. He said, godliness is profitable unto all things. It will be alone, is profitable unto all. There is no aspect of life wherein godliness does not bear result. If it is in your life, every aspect of life works. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, we are not talking about, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dominoes effect. Now, when it is a domino effect, now a domino effect is when you do one thing and then you get a result in that particular line. Like for instance, uh, you know, you can say you help um, somebody to gain admission to school and then somebody helped your own child, your own daughter to also gain admission. So that means you did one thing and then you got results in that line as well. Oh, I blessed somebody with 10,000 uh, Naira and then somebody blessed me with 100,000 Naira. Now, please understand that is okay. You did one thing and then you got it in that line as well. That is domino effect. That is an effect of what you have done in that particular line that is exerting, you know, transformation on your environment in that particular line. But when it is a ripple effect, ladies and gentlemen, that means it's touching on all aspects, things that are even dissimilar to what you have done. It's touching, you sow money now, your health is healed. They bless Brother Paul in Philippians chapter 4, verse uh, 15 to 19. Um, you know, the Macedonian church sent gift to him. But Paul said, the Lord will supply all your needs. I, I thought it was just 
money you give to Brother Paul. Brother Paul said, what you sent to me is a sweet-smelling offering. You understand what I'm talking about? This is wonderful. He said, but the resultant effect of it is that God will supply all your needs. So, so those who were sick there, God will supply sandness of hell to them. But they gave money to Barapo, but they are reaping sandness of hell. Can you see in another line? And those who are jobless, they're going to get a job. God will supply all your needs. Those who are without spouses, they're going to connect with spouses. Oh, wow. God will supply all your needs. And that is a word for somebody here. Ladies and gentlemen, there is one thing you can do. You know, uh, I didn't plan to say this. The Holy Ghost just moved me there. <laughs> the others I'm talking about. There is something you can do. That is just what God is teaching somebody again. One thing you can do that can meet all your needs. One thing you can do that can meet all your needs. You can be a blessing to a man of God and then all your needs in different aspects of life. Even areas that are not directly related to what you are doing for that man of God or that woman of God. God is saying that all those areas will be met. The Bible made us to understand that there was a man by the name Elijah in 1 Kings chapter number 17 from verse 9, God spoke unto him to go to the widow of Zarephath. The Bible said when Elijah went there, and of course the woman had just a little meal to eat and her son to die, and then Elijah pressed the woman and the woman gave to Elijah first. And then the word of prophecy came that the barrel of me shall not cease. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail. Now, that is domino effect. She gave food. She's harvesting food. But it's beyond that. The Bible says later, the son of the woman fell sick and died. And Elijah, <laughs> raised by the power of the Spirit, the son back to life. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, the woman sold food, but she's, she's reaping resurrection. She's reaping the raising of the dead. She's reaping healing in the body of the child as well. You understand what I'm talking about? She's reaping sadness and joy back. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, that is ripple effect. That means it is going beyond just one line. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It is transcending into, you know, dissimilar areas where the power of God is touching upon all aspects. Please understand, there is one thing you can do. That's just one that God has just revealed again. You can be a blessing to the anointed and then the anointing will meet all your needs in different aspects glory be to god in the highest so what are we saying ladies and gentlemen the anointing of the holy spirit of god is so fundamental god is giving us master keys in scripture. the bible is what i call a compendium of master keys it takes only the sensitive to understand these master keys and you begin to operate them i don't struggle because i've learned some master keys when i need some things there is a particular man of god i just call him and then I send something to him, and that man prays for me. And ladies and gentlemen, I see changes instantly, immediately. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I've learned that lesson in my life. When I need some certain things, I just look at a master key that covers it. I get it done in the house of God. Do you understand what I'm talking about? When I, you see, the, all of these things are principal, you know, master keys that are in scriptures. We've seen love. We've seen giving. We've seen. You know, so many things, the will of God. We've seen so many things, you know, as we have been teaching in this series. So I want to beseech everybody, please go through this series again. For, I think we started this series in January. Go through it again. All those things are principal master keys. We've seen the fear of God and the benefits of it. If you fear God deeply, don't let me deceive you. There are benefits like we, we considered last month. You know, those who fear God, the Bible says in Psalm 128 that they are children. The wife will be like olive tree, round, round about his house. That means you will not be houseless. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, if you fear God and you walk with God, the Almighty will always provide shelter for you. And will give you settlement. I mean, good family. He said your children shall be, you know, like, you know, olive tree, round about your tabernacle, you know, and all of that, you know, things like that. You know, you will be having, you know, uh, beautiful experiences with your family. You know, that is what God is talking about. And the Bible said, of course, you know, the Lord will bless you out of Zion, you know, and bless you in your Jerusalem, which is your place, you know, of, of settlement, your place of domicile. I mean, you will see a lot of dominion there. And you know one thing, those things can be there and believers are not claiming it. If you truly fear God, that is another thing, you know, ladies and gentlemen, begin to claim those benefits. Begin to talk to God, Lord, I fear you. Lord, you know, this morning I was just thinking, I said, Lord, I give to the poor. And that is just the truth. Is you know, it's not it's no lie. I give to the poor every week. I, I don't think there is a week that a large chunk of my resources don't go, you know, to feed the needy or to feed the poor. I, every week, 
at least more than 50,000 naira out of my hand goes to feed the poor every week, every blessed week. I said, Lord, I give to the poor. There are benefits of giving, you know, to the poor and all that. I began to claim them. I began to talk to the Lord about it. Now, if you don't claim them, you may never see it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The Bible says that these things have to be brought to God in remembrance. Look at Acts chapter number 10. Now, I'm already ministering, please, to people who are doing these things. Do you understand what I'm talking about? In Acts chapter number 10, the Bible says at the hour of prayer, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Colinius and said, Colinius, your prayers and your hands have come up to God for a memorial. That means it has been brought to the memory of God. It has been brought to, you know, to mind in God. You know what I'm talking about. That means it has come up on the screen of God's mind. Now, please understand, you might be doing it and for some reason, probably it has not come up. Do you understand? You will notice Noah was in the ship. The Bible says it was there for so, so many days. And the scripture said, and the Lord remembered Noah. You know the meaning of that? That means his matter came up on the screen. Oh, come on. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, the moment you will hear, and the Lord remembered, that means the matter of that person has come up on the screen of the mind of God. Now, you can also bring it. It's either God remembers by himself, or you can bring it to his remembrance. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter number 43 and verse 26, the Bible says, bring me in remembrance. He said, declare ye that thou mayest be justified. So you can bring God to remembrance. You know, Ezekiah, when he was, when he was given the judgment to die, the Bible says, the man said, Lord, I've walked with you in all uprightness. You know, I have done this, I've done that. He counted his good works before God. And the Almighty gave a judgment that was against the dead verdict on his life immediately. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So you have the right also to bring God to remembrance. God can remember. You also can bring God to remembrance. In Isaiah chapter number 62 and verse number 6, he said, I have set watchmen over your walls, O Jerusalem. He said, those that, you know, that, those that will not hold on to their peace day or night. He said, ye that keep the Lord in remembrance of his promises. Can you see it? So those who keep the Lord in remembrance. So you can bring it to God's remembrance and God also can remember by himself. Ladies and gentlemen, don't always wait for God to remember by himself. How oh, is your own matter? Sit over your matter and remind God. You know, so this morning I was just saying, I said, Lord, ah, I give to the poor. And that's just the truth. I bless the poor. There is no week that I don't give more than. I, it's not, you see, why we say these things is not because we want to win anybody's um, approval or anything. No. We are saying these things. The Bible says that we may be, of course, you know, comforted by our mutual faith. And then we can challenge ourselves, you know, through our good works. That's what the Bible said. I said, Lord, I do this regularly. You understand what I'm talking about? So this benefit of giving to the poor should be down in my life. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So everybody under the sound of my voice, I want you to please, you know, take this very seriously. If you are doing these master keys, then look at the benefits of the master keys and bring it to God in remembrance. This is, uh, you know, one of the balances to this message. Please don't forget. All these things I'm sharing right now since I started today, I did not plan to share them. I have not said anything today that is in my plan, that what was in my plan. I'm just moved by the Spirit to go into all these areas. Because many are doing these things, they seem not to know how to activate, you know, and provoke, ladies and gentlemen, the hand of God to deliver the benefits of the master keys they are operating. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So these are master keys and scriptures that we are learning every day. And may the Holy Spirit of God help us to be able to you know, operate this master key in Jesus' name. So today, by the grace of God, we have been looking at positive things in scriptures, master keys, and the Bible is full of all of them. You know, I've shared one again today, which is being a blessing to a man of God and all that. So there are so many of them like that in scriptures. Always make sure that you locate them. The Bible says, but Paul the Apostle was speaking in, in, in Timothy. He said, Onisphorus, he often refreshed me. He said, the Lord will have mercy on him and on his household on that day. Can you see? That is to say that on his pharaohs, ladies and gentlemen, brought himself and his household under divine blessing by taking care of brother Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the master keys in scriptures. There must be, I don't know why the Holy Ghost is moving into this. Please, I'm not preaching this out of any necessity and I'm not pointing any attention to myself. I am not in need. 
with due respect. Let me say that. I am not in it at all. So, but I'm teaching something here as a truth of God's word for somebody to be blessed. Glory be to God in the highest. The Bible said, and the Kepra Legarosta Zipra Ningadishta, in the book of Ezekiel, he said, Thou shalt give the, your dose unto the priest. He said, And he shall bless it. And, and he said, Your dose and your first fruit unto the priest. And he shall bless it. Please check that scripture for me. It's in Ezekiel. He said, Dose, D O E. He said, that shall give your dose and your first fruit unto the priest, and it shall bless it and cause, you know, blessings to rest on your household. Can you see it? So when you particularly have an anointed servant of God that you are consistently a blessing to, you see, there is something that God has covenanted with that man of God. If there is a spill of anointing upon him that rests on household. If somebody catch you what I'm talking about. So everybody, please make sure there is at least a man of God that you are consistently a blessing to. Oh, yes. Make sure. It, it, it doesn't cost much to be a blessing to a man of God. A recharge card of a thousand naira is a blessing. A recharge card of 500 naira is a blessing to a man of God. Am I talking to somebody here? So it's not until, oh, I bring 39 billion that I'm now a blessing to a man of God. No, 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 no. Pastor Adebo, he said somebody gave him 200 naira. As he was trying to wind up his glass, he saw that person just streamed through, and he, he has been unemployed. Papa just said, God bless you. He said, and instantly that brother got the job that he wanted. Instantly. Now, just 200 naira. So it doesn't cost much. And of course, getting that job now, it will affect his family because it was a, it was a much desired job. Do you understand me? All these younger ones that are unemployed or that are still in school, he will be able to, you know, succor them. He will be able to be a blessing to his, to his father, his mother, and all that. He will be able to now marry and raise a responsible family. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So it was, a, it was a household blessing that he got from Baba Dewe with just 200 naira. So please, men of God are anointed. People don't understand that. Take advantage of that with men of God, with servants of God. They are anointed to bring impact on your household. Please, what is that scripture saying in Ezekiel? Yes? Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 30. Yes? And the first of all the fruits of all things. And the first of all the fruits of all things. And every oblation of all. And every oblation of all. Every sort of your, of your oblations. Every sort of your oblations. Shall be the priests. Shall be the priests. And you shall also give unto the priest the first of your dough. And you shall give also unto the priest the first of your dough. Dough means money. Mm hmm. Can you see that it may cause the blessing to rest in thy house? Check me that scripture. Um, please, somebody else check. There is a scripture in Judges, where I think Judges 17, 18, where somebody, one man was speaking. He said, now, you know, the blessing of the Lord will abide in his house because he has a priest in his house. It should be in Judges 17, 18. Check that scripture for me. Then there is another scripture I'd like you to check. And that is the scripture of um, Onesphorus, where Brother Paul was speaking in Timothy. He said, the Lord will have mercy on the house of Onesphorus, for he hopes to refresh me. Please. Now, the one we just read now is Ezekiel chapter 44 and verse 30. This is another revelation. God is just giving to somebody here. You know, you must have at least a man of God in your house, over your house, so that blessings can always rest. Make sure that at least from time to time, you grease their hand. You see, it causes things to work well for your children. Sir, it causes things to work well for your wife. It causes things to work well for you, sir. It causes things to work well for you, mommy. It causes things to work well, you know, on the household. This one is household blessing. This is a revelation that God has given to somebody. Just a recharge card to a man of God can bring your whole house under a blessing. I'm telling you, just 200 naira to a man of God can bring your whole house under a blessing. Yes, can I get that scripture? On this pharaohs in Timothy, please. And then the other one in... Um, in Judges 17, 18. I think it's in my house. So he said he has now a prophet called my house. So in his house. He said, therefore, the Lord will be blessings will rest on his house. Eh? Judges. Judges. You don't know what you're talking about. Judges is more than 18. I say it's Judges chapter 17 or chapter 18. Check Judges chapter 17 verse 10 for me. Judges 17, 10. Yes. Dwell with me. Mm -hmm. And be unto me a father. Mm -hmm. And a priest. Oh, yes. And I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year. Now, this is Micah speaking to a priest. He said, yeah. Dwell with me. And I will be, and I will what? 
and be unto me a father and a priest. Can you see it? And I will give it ten shekels in a year. Yes. Yes. And a suit of apparel. And a suit of apparel. And a victuals. Oh, and a victuals. And so the Levite went in. And the Levite was content to dwell with the man. And the young man was unto him as one of his sons. Oh yes, keep on. Twelve. And Micah consecrated the Levite. Oh yes. And the young man oh, yes. became his priest. Oh yes. And was in the house of Micah. Oh yes. Then said Micah. Then, now I know. then said Micah. Now that the priest, the man of God, has come to dwell with him. Now know. N now I know. Now know I that the Lord will do me good. Now know I that the Lord will do me good. Since I have a Levite to my priest. Can you see? Since I have a Levite to my priest. Can you see it? This is even a fundamental truth that men know from the Old Testament. That when a man of God, you are committed to a servant of God and you are servicing the anointing on that man, he said, I know that the Lord will do me good. Can you see it? Since I have a Levite to what? To my priest. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a deep secret in scriptures. Many people don't know. Every month, there must be a man of God that is a covering over your life. That, ladies and gentlemen, you are blessing. Uh, all of these things are master keys in scriptures. The day the anointing on that man, will work, somebody may do it for 10 months and you are not getting any result. Well, the day you will say, Lord, remember me. I'm a blessing to this unction. <laughs> the Lord will say it's true, you are doing it. I have to remember it. I have to fulfill my word. The Bible says the scriptures cannot be broken. Now, that, is, you, that means God can't, the Bible says, let all men be last and let God be true. For God is not a man that should lie. God, this is what your word says. He said it in, in Judges chapter 17, verse 13. This man says, look, I, I have a priest now to, to uh, a levy to my priest. Now, so now I know you will do me good. You will bless me because of it. So divine blessing rests on those who take care ladies, of men of God. It rests on their household. Yes. Second Timothy chapter 1. Yes. From verse 16. Said the Lord give mercy unto the house of the Onesiphorus. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus. For he often refreshed me. And was not ashamed of my chain. And when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently, he sought me out very diligently and, found me out. and found me out. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. How many things he ministers unto me as in Ephesus, thou knowest well. And in how many things he ministers unto me as in Ephesus, thou knowest well. That means this guy took it as an obligation. Do you know what it means to seek for a man of God very diligently? Until he got him. And even in Ephesus, everywhere, he just kept being a blessing. In Rome, everywhere, he kept looking for Paul to be a blessing to him. And Paul brought his household under mercy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there is one thing you can do that can affect your household forever. So when you see the children of Onesphorus rising and great-grandchildren and great-grand-grand-grandchildren rising to be president of nations, senators, governors, this one, that one, great business people, as in rising in power, you know, being great and all that, is because this man has come under a covenant with God. Am I talking to somebody here? And that covenant is working heavily for him. And what is that covenant? He knew that servicing Paul brings God on his household. So he, he was putting in energy to do. Do you know what it means when you are putting in energy to be a blessing to someone? That means you are seeking for, you are not waiting for that person even to pray for you before you can say, oh, Daddy Egbasa, please take something. No, you are not even waiting for him to minister to you. But you are just committed, knowing that he carries a grace that services your destiny upward. If somebody catch on what I'm talking about, can I count how many that have been a blessing to me like that consistently? And God has consistently lifted them. Consistently. They are moving. There's one of my daughters I was speaking with uh, two nights ago. Since she was in medical school, this lady had always been a blessing to me. And I saw how the unction lifted her consistently every month. I don't think there was a month all through that time that she wasn't a blessing. She was, no matter how small, she would send something. I said, what is the issue happening with this lady? Anyway, the word came. The husband came. I gave her the, the word. The husband would get a job in oil company. It happened. I gave her a word. They would get the house. They got it. I gave her a word. The, as in what was always coming. Now they have another set of houses. 
now the word is coming for her to establish a hospital. They are working on, in the United States, uh, working on establishing an hospital right now. She's just waxing. Do you know how many doctors are in America? How many have their own hospital? This one now is starting her own hospital. She's just waxing from one level of greatness to the other. She's moving and she's moving in power. Now she had a child that had a little bit of challenge. We prayed. And the child is speaking well now. God took care of the challenge as well. Every, she, she got married. You know, children were not coming. We prayed. Heavens opened again. Children started coming. As in, at every challenge, the anointing had always lifted. Until now, she's the most outstanding of all her father's children. The mo nobody close to her. Others are also working. But they, they are far. She's, as in, she's far. The distance between them and her is like probably she's on level 70 and they are on level 10. You can understand. She's, she's just, she has bought about three houses now. She's just buying houses and buy. she's just moving, waxing heavily. Ladies and gentlemen, what am I just trying to say? You know, and hardly do you, from one month to the other, she's committed to forever to service the anointing on the man of God. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you have something like that. It brings a lot of blessings on your household. I will give prophecy that the husband will get this social, social job. It will happen. The husband wanted another job. We prayed again. God gave us the word. It happened again. Like that, like that, just kept tearing the heavens open over their household. So your commitment, ladies and gentlemen, is a master key. Maybe any man of God, God lives in your heart. Get something. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, so that's, uh, well, I know something funny. I never plan to share what I just shared, but I think the Holy Spirit knows that somebody here needs it. That's why it's good to pray before you start ministry. The Holy Spirit will direct you to the needs of the people. Glory be to God in the highest. So today, by the grace of God, let's go into what we plan to share. Uh, today, by the grace of God, we will be talking on inner flaws and effects. Inner flaws and effects. Ladies and gentlemen, as we have been looking at positive master keys, you know, and what they do, there are also, ladies and gentlemen, master keys negatively. And the effects also they can exert. It is very important to know that the Bible is full of master keys, whether positively or negatively. If somebody catch what I'm talking about, and it shows you the effects of these things, and at the same time, it shows you how to be able to take a ride above these things. Glory be to God in the highest. So, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, under the sound of my voice, the Holy Spirit of God is speaking to us to prepare us. You know, uh, for what I call dominion, Neki Pradi Garato Centra. Ah, the Holy Spirit is telling me that there is somebody that is watching me right now. You are a woman, and I'm seeing you talking to the Lord, and you are saying, "Ah, but Pastor, Lord, I also do these things that you are preaching. I do these master key things." The Lord said, I should let you know, as you are talking right now, he said, I'm granting even your heart desires. He said, and you are seeing the effect with immediate, with immediate, with immediate touch. He said, this is happening right away. It's happening right away. He said, your answer is being granted right now by the power of the Spirit of God. Father, we just give you all the praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I remember we were preaching one day. I was sharing so many testimonies and a woman was there. And he was like, Lord, I've been in this church. Ah, why is it that all these testimonies are sharing? She's not <laughs> getting anything. And where I was preaching, the Lord told me, I said, there's someone here, you are saying this in your heart. That's why I said, he said, the Lord said, by Monday, you are going to open a shop. He said, your testimony comes by Monday. By Monday, Tuesday, he said, you have all the bread to you need. By Monday, somebody called her. I think you should start a business. Give her money. Second person called. Third person called. All of them gave her money. Fourth person called. He said, look, I shipped the whole container to Nigeria. I think you should start a business. Go and sell the whole container. Yeah. <laughs> so she got money for shop. She found the shop. And then the goods to fill the shop, everything came by Monday, as the Lord said. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to here. Your immediate answer has come. <laughs> if that is you, I think your Hebrew should be the loudest Amen. in the house. <laughs> Glory be to God in the highest. So we are looking at Hina flows. Inner flaws, ladies and gentlemen, are attitudinary, ladies and gentlemen, failures and character, ladies and gentlemen, uh, negative dispositions that have been planted by man by the fall of man. When the devil came, he corrupted the holy nature inside man. Ladies and gentlemen, and men were subject to death. The Bible says in Genesis chapter number 2, verse 7, when God formed man from the earth, the Almighty breathed into him, and man became a living soul. That means life was in him. Ladies and gentlemen, he had life in him. 
Now, God said the day you eat of the fruit, he said you will surely die. And the death that God is talking about primarily is spiritual death, transcending into all other realms of death. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Now, the Bible made us to understand that man became disconnected from God. That was spiritual death. You see, that life in the soul, ladies and gentlemen, was corrupted. That was the area the devil went for. Remember in 2 Corinthians now, is it 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3, 2nd of 1st Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 3. The Bible says that, uh, of course, uh, Brother Paul said, if he has less, of course, as Satan begat he through his subtlety. He said, L you know, less, of course, you know, your mind be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Your mind be corrupted. Can you see it? So what the devil goes for is the mind. That is where he went to corrupt. That, you know, remember the Bible said man became a living soul and the soul accommodates the mind. So he went to where the life of God resides in man and went to corrupt it. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So the target of the devil over your life, ladies and gentlemen, is the plan of God over you. Is where the word of God is resting over you. Is where the citadel of grace is in your life. That is where the devil is targeting. Do you notice that all that the devil was targeting the life of something were the hair of something? Because that was the citadel of grace on his life. I don't know what the devil is planning. I stand in the prophetic to declare over somebody here. That in the name of Jesus, every attack on the citadel of grace in your life, on the sitting of mercy over your life, I say that attack scatters now in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. I don't care how many of them are gathered together against you. By the power of the spirit of the living God, I unleash total devastation on that conspiracy in the name of Jesus. Amen. I speak that every plan of the enemy shall never live to see a day in your life. Amen. It shall never live to see the dawning of a new day in your life. Amen. It shall never live to see the light of the day by the power of the spirit of the living God. Amen. Somebody is free from that attack. Amen. Lift up holy hands and shout, I am free from that attack. In the name of Jesus. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? You see, um, God in his mercies has, is giving us this understanding so that we may understand what the devil is all after. It's not about you. It's about the God factor in you. Because you without God is nothing. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? The Bible says without the spirit, a man is dead. So you without God, you are nothing. So it's about the God factor. That is the power that makes everything work. It's like the brain box of a car. Once you attack the brain box of a car, the whole car start man. I mean, it start you know malfunction functioning. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? You go to attack the CPU of a computer. Forget about the money. The, forget about the monitor on your on your table. Forget about the mouse in your hand. Forget about you know the keyboard that you you can press. Once the CPU of that computer is affected, please understand all those other things will start mal malfunctioning. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So the CPU of your life is the God factor. Oh, glory be to God. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So God in you is what makes everything work. Yes, it's working around you not because of your skillfulness. Don't make a mistake about it. It's not because of your beauty. Don't make a mistake about it. It's not because of your brilliance. Don't make a mistake about it. It's about the God factor in you. Glory be to God in the highest. Yes. So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? That is the area the devil targets in every life. Now here, in the case of Adam, the Bible made us to understand that the devil brought certain temptations to them and brought these people down. And from that moment, ladies and gentlemen, every man partook of the sin nature. You see, all through the scriptures, you will see the sinful nature, the sinful nature, the sinful nature, or the sin nature. Now, what he's just trying to say is that it became a nature to every man. By birth, ladies and gentlemen, you are a partaker of it. The Bible made us to understand in Romans chapter number 5, verses 18 and 19, in fact, the Bible said, in fact, verse 19, by the disobedience of one man, many are made disobedient. So it's automatic. Ladies and gentlemen, every man that is born of woman, whether by natural birth or cesarean operation, insofar as you are born of woman, you are a partaker of the Adamic nature. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So the sinful nature is passed across to every man, not because you sin, no, not because you have done anything good or bad. No, it is past. It is inborn, just like what we were teaching on Sunday. I mean, sorry, on Wednesday, from the womb to the tomb. Do you understand? I'm talking about experiencing Christ-made transformation. Now, everybody, please, I will advise you to listen to Wednesday's message. It was an awesome message that will change your life. Do you understand? I'm talking about while you was in the family of 
or bro, brother Jacob, Papa Jacob. And then the same thing was passed across to him from the womb. He started holding his brother's ears from the womb. Please understand. So he, him coming to the heart and executing those things. Those things, ladies and gentlemen, came from the womb in his life. Do you understand? That is why Jesus came with another womb to redeem us. And he redeemed us from that foundation. For when a person be in Christ, the same is a new creature. Can you see? Another translation says, it's a species of being that never had a prior existence. A speech, he did it. Jesus completely disconnected us from the Adamic nature. That's why you will notice in the genealogy, ladies and gentlemen, of in the genealogy, ladies and gentlemen, of Jesus from Adam, it was to Adam to set to set to this and that and that and that unto Joseph, the father of Jesus. And then after Joseph, the Bible says, of course, now came Jesus. But you see, you will notice one thing, ladies and gentlemen, the seed of the man was not in Jesus. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It was the seed of God that was that, that, that formed Jesus. Joseph never knew his wife, you know, all through the time, even until delivery. He never knew Mary. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That means he never had any intercourse with Mary. Now, what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? The seed of the man was not there. So it disconnected completely from the Adamic nature and the Adamic fall. You understand what I'm talking about? So that it can be the progenitor of a new flow entirely. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, so the blood of God is the blood, if God ever has a blood, is the blood now that runs in Jesus. Glory be to God in the highest. Now, now that we are in Christ Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, it disconnects us from the Adamic nature, from the sinful nature, ladies and gentlemen, so that we can now have that life back. You know, the life that was in Adam was corrupted, but now Jesus came with another life. Do you understand? Now the life that Jesus came with now is in an area where the devil cannot reach. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the life of the first Adam was in the soul. He became a living soul. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 45, the Bible says that the first Adam became a living soul. Now, the Bible says, but the second Adam is the Lord from heaven. The Bible says, is the life-giving spirit. Can you see it? So now, please understand. So the, this time around, now the life now resides in your spirit, not in the soul anymore. So that is an area the hand of the devil cannot touch. Oh, come on, I might talk to somebody here. He's not subject, ladies and gentlemen, to the flaws of the flesh anymore. So please understand the flaws of the flesh cannot affect this one. The fact that, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the fact that you drank alcohol does not say, ladies and gentlemen, you, you have now lost the life of God in you. No, 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 no. All you need is to repent. That life keeps flowing again because it's now residing in your spirit, not in your soul. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, when it is in your soul, the, your soul, the interconnectivity between your soul and your body is what is called the flesh. If it is there, then it can be corrupted because your mind is the pleasure-seeking part of you that wants all those things. And once it's corrupted, that life is corrupted. But now that it's in your spirit, please understand, if your soul is corrupted, your spirit still carries that life. Do you understand? All you need is to reconnect with God, ladies and gentlemen, and fly again. Glory be to God. And I don't know who I'm talking to here. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse number 2, in fact, starting from verse 1, the Bible says, Having therefore these promises, let us therefore cleanse ourselves from every filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. In, in so far as you cleanse yourself, the Bible says, ladies and gentlemen, you have the acceptance of God again. That life keeps flowing again from your spirit. The devil cannot corrupt it in you as it did to Adam again. In the mighty name of Jesus. A new life has started in you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's the reason why we born again Christians could still come missing and we are still connected to God. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And we are not, as in we repent, we come out of our sin and we are still flowing with our daddy. Do you understand? It's not like one time sin that Adam did and he lost it all. Oh, come on. Did somebody catch what I'm talking about? Because our life now is in the spirit. It's not in the soul. Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Come on, tell somebody, I'm happy I have a life. And that life is the life of God. And that life resides in my spirit. Glory be to God in the highest. So is somebody catching what God is talking about? Now listen, ladies and gentlemen. What God is saying to us, ladies and gentlemen, is that the devil, ladies and gentlemen, is all after bringing corruptions to people. He wants people to fall. The concept of sin, therefore, is a concept also that has several dynamic effects. Do you understand me? And the concept of sin has to do with the sin nature inside man. It has to do with a nature, ladies and gentlemen, that was inherited from the Adamic sense, and that nature resides in the flesh. What Jesus did was to redeem our spirit. Now, please understand, every day as you listen to God's word, you walk on the redemption of your soul. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That's why the Bible says in James chapter number 1 
uh, verses 21, 22, the Bible says, Receive even the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul. So the redemption of your soul is a, is, is a gradual thing. It keeps going on, you know, as long as you're in this world. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The Bible says, it makes me lighter than green pastures. That is the word of God. It restores my soul. So the more you expose yourself to God's word, the more the word of God keeps purging your soul. It keeps purging your conscience. It keeps purging, you know, all of those dead things out of you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? In Hebrews chapter number 9, verse 12, the Bible says, If the blood of bulls and the ashes of ephah, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Jesus, which was uttered through eternal spirit, purge your conscience of all dead works to serve the living God? There was a time in my life that some certain thoughts were always branded in my mind. That was many years ago. And, you know, I told you one time that I had some certain thoughts that I couldn't just get off. I mean, 20 years, about 20 years ago or a little bit above or thereabout, you know, it was so bad in my life that I was like, God, who would deliver me from this thought? Negative thoughts. You know what I did? God just gave me the scripture, Hebrews 9, 12. If the blood of bulls and ashes of Ephah, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Jesus, can you see it, which was uttered through eternal spirit, purge your conscience of all dead works. Can you see it? To start the living, to serve the living God. I began to apply the blood of Jesus. That revelation, ladies and gentlemen, was what delivered me. It was as though, in fact, in my mind then, it was as though that area has been corrupted in my mind. That area has been corroded. You know, when you have a piece of metal and a spot has been corroded, you know, oxidization has taken place and that place is corroded. You know, <laughs> there was a time I used to have a bed with metal head and a part of it became corroded. You know, the more I clean it, the thing that it couldn't clean. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. It's corroded. Do you understand? So the, 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 the stainless steel kind of plate in there, you know, had been corroded, you know, so that place was rusting. That was, that was how I felt that a part of my mind was rusting, that there was nothing that could wash it. But thanks be unto God for the whole powerful blood of Jesus. And thank God for the revelation of his word. Hebrews 9.12. I began to apply it and that thing was completely cleansed of me. That was how I got a life again. And I was completely delivered from that thing. Ladies and gentlemen, since that time I got delivered. If you are here today, there is an habit that you are struggling with. The blood of Jesus still has his power. I say he can still purge and he can still deliver. So God bless you. You are free by the blood of Jesus. So keep applying that blood on your mind. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So you see, ladies and gentlemen, revelation of God's word makes people spiritual. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It helps you, ladies and gentlemen, to attain heights of spirituality that you want to naturally attain. Now, what am I just trying to say, ladies and gentlemen? So you see, the, the, the Adamic nature was passed into mankind and mankind therefore had his mind to contend with. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So the redemption of the mind is as you expose yourself to God's word every day. That's why in Romans chapter number 12, the Bible says, Be ye therefore transformed by the renewing of your mind. Can you see it? Because your mind controls your physical life. Your spirit, of course, controls your mind and controls, and the mind controls the body and your physical life. So you see, if your mind is corrupted, it, whatever the spirit is transmitting, the mind blocks it. It blocks it. It doesn't allow the transmission into your physical life. That's why you must bring the mind in subjection so that it can allow alignment of your physical life with the details of the spirit. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So every man must work on the areas of corrosion, you know, and areas of, uh, of, of rusting or rustification. Or I don't know what, what, what uh, is it rusting now, uh, you know, of the mind. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Work with it so that the mind can be brought in subjection and in all gravity under the authority of the spirit. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? And then you begin to see the Holy Ghost inside of your spirit dominating your physical life glory be to god in the highest so what are we saying ladies and gentlemen it is therefore very very important that as christians we understand that the devil corrupts the mind and this adamic nature is taken up by every man now please understand inside every man's flesh i want you to understand is something that is called lust and i will be teaching on lust today because i want you to understand something here that lust is one key thing, ladies and gentlemen, that has limited many. Many people don't understand that the Adam, the, it is your spirit that Jesus did something about and gave you the word so that you can work on your soul 
and then by by that by that you dominate your physical life because your soul is is what accommodates your mind that that controls your physical life now the bible says in first thessalonians chapter number five and verse 23 that god sanctifies you and preserves you holy spirit soul and body so you have a spirit you are a spirit you have a soul you live in a body but a body in itself does not cannot it's just like a cloth that you are wearing Please understand, it's just the art suit that you wear. Those who go to the space, they have a, a suit they must wear because there is no oxygen there. So the suit will carry all the oxygen they needed. It will protect their skin from harshness of the weather. The suit will help them, you know, to to maintain some certain things for their for their for their body to 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 be able to adapt to the space world. Is somebody catching? I'm talking about. So please understand, on the hot air there is an art suit. So there is a space suit for them to wear. On the space and the heart here there is a heart suit and that heart suit is your body do you understand that's what accommodates your spirit and your soul do you understand and helps you to be able to function in this world now listen ladies and gentlemen nakapra dido dista any attack on your heart suit i see the power of god destroying it in jesus yeah. name the devil will never terminate even your lifetime here by attacking your heart suit in the name of jesus yeah. so what are we saying ladies and gentlemen so your spirit is where God resides on your soul, therefore, is the intermediary between your spirit and your body, your physical life. So here are the slurries and gentlemen. Every man, therefore, you know, it's like, I've always given the illustration, it's like an egg. You have the yolk inside, you have the harbourman, and then you have the shell. Now, the, the yolk inside cannot get to the shell, which is the external life, without going through the harbourman, the white part. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So the harbourman is your soul. The yolk inside is your spirit. And the external life we shell is your body. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So listen, ladies and gentlemen, every transmission your spirit is making, your soul must permit it. That means you must work on your soul. And Jesus did something about your spirit. When he redeemed us, it was our spirit that he redeemed. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Now, it, your soul, you have to work on it every day, subjecting yourself to God's word. The Bible says, receive the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. You must expose yourself to the revelations of God's word and the apocalypses of the same. Ladies and gentlemen, we keep bringing transformation to the soul, renewing the mind so that your life can align in, in line with what the spirit of God inside of your spirit is dictating. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? A Christian that does not, you know, take time to listen to God's word, who is living a life just by himself, that Christian will suffer a lot because, uh, don't let me deceive you, it's not working on his soul. It's not working on his soul. Make sure there is no day, ladies and gentlemen, that you are wordless. Make sure that every day the word of God finds a place in you. That word, ladies and gentlemen, is every day comprehensively doing something on your soul. Remember in Philippians chapter number 2 and verse number 13, the Bible says it is God all the while. He said, he said, he said, he said, walking within you. He said, I love how Amplified Bible do, uh, puts it. He said, it's energizing. Is I'm propelling. <laughs> he said. He said. He said. He said, he said, he said the, the will and the desire of God inside of you. Now it is God all this while working in you. You know, uh, I love this woman Joyce Myers the way she put it. She said, you know, she was so disappointed with some weaknesses in her life that she got. You know, she was almost given. I mean, f I mean, uh, being fed up of, of herself. That how, how will she change? He said, but she just kept exposing herself to God's word every time. He said, someday when she looked back, of course, it took time. He said, but when she looked back, he said, she discovered that, wow, she has changed a lot. Now, that means every day she wasn't seeing the changes because the changes were so imperceptible and uh, they were so small, but God was all the while at work. Glory be to God. He was doing this little by little. As if she was exposing herself to God's word, that word in itself is able and powerful, quick and powerful. It's working, it's doing something on the soul. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And someday when she looked back, you know, the submission of those seemingly imperceptible changes has produced a giant change in her. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So God is speaking to somebody here that please let there be no day that the word of God does not work in your spirit. And do you understand? Make sure the word of God resides in your soul. That revelation brings transformation every time. Glory be to God in the highest. So because that is where the Adamic nature, you know, resides. That is where the devil is attacking every man, the soul. is limited to the soul and is doing his best to play on the soul. And when the soul, you see, the soul is what controls the physical life. When somebody has lost his mind, you understand? They call it infirmity of the mind. That means the person has gone bonkers. He has no physical relevance in this world. I don't know if you understand. A madman, he cannot buy a house. A madman is on the street, he's in the market, he's walking naked. A madman, he sleeps in gutter. 
a madman cannot contest for any election. Neither can he vote or be voted for. It's a concern to the community. Why? It does, is it because he doesn't have a spirit? No. Is it because he doesn't have a body? No. But because the mind is troubled. The mind is under the oppression of a disease. They call it infirmity of the mind. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So what God is saying, you know, to somebody here is that your external life is controlled from your mind area. And that is where the devil is targeting. That is where the Adamic nature, the sin nature, ladies and gentlemen, gains its relevance and is sitting. So ladies and gentlemen, it is our duty to deal with it. So somebody is saying, okay, now, now I understand. I've been born again, but man, I still have this urge. I still have this. I still have that. Ladies and gentlemen, as it, being born again doesn't take it away. It is your spirit that was redeemed. It is you now taking the life of God from your spirit. The other thing I'm talking about with the word of God and extending it for the salvation of your soul. Oh, come on. Glory be to God in the highest. It's for the catchy what I'm talking about. So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? Inside, so far as we are exposed to the world, our mind is exposed to the world. We go to school to train our minds. They educate our minds. They teach us Awusa, they teach us English, they teach us sciences, they teach us everything. We go to school, we live in this world, and every time you're watching TV, something is happening. There is either they are, ladies and gentlemen, deforming your mind or rightly informing your mind. Something is happening. They are transforming or deforming every time. <laughs> every information lands on your mind to do something. Do you understand? It's either it's impacting you positively or it's impacting you negatively. That's why the Bible says, be careful what you hear. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That is to say every information doesn't leave you the same. Something is being, you know, transmitted inside of you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And listen, ladies and gentlemen, we are in this world, we can run away from this world. This world, ladies and gentlemen, has its own lost. In 1 John chapter number 2 and verse 15. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. The Bible, oh, the Lord said there is somebody here. He said, your, your children, your daughters, are, 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 they are struggling with academics. Your son is struggling with academics. Whosoever it is, the Lord said, I should let you know from this time, he said, there is a difference. Hear the spirit of the living God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for that. We we'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? La Pardos de Skila Capra, Ali Aika, Lila, Lalacto, Edi, Ada Aika, Nanti, Gizaka, Pradi Bradiga, Dutti, Praliga, Doctor Zintra, Disketaya, Copradia. A loss that there's somebody here, the soil of your father's house that has been following you. A loss that today I bring a separation between you and that soil. Amen. He said, Every time you dream, you see your past, and it's like your past, whether your secondary school, whether this, he said, This thing has tied you to your past. A loss said, Today there is a dissociation between you and your past. Amen. See the spirit of living God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We'll give you all the praise in Jesus. So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? In First John chapter number 2 and verse 15, the Bible says, Love not this world and the things that are daring. It says, For in the world, the Bible says, You have the lust of the highs, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Can you see? The Bible says, In this world, you have the lust of the flesh, the lust of the highs, and the pride of life. Now, I wanted to understand something here, ladies and gentlemen. The lust is a very deep thing and then the pride pride is another deep thing pride is a nature of the devil you know he fell from heaven because of pride so he's always there it is a major content of the of worldliness or oh, uh, me me that i'm this i can't i mean me that i uh, me i'm too i'm too big i can't take that i'm i'm this i'm that if you are this you are that that god's word can correct you or god's word can lead you do you understand? You can't humble yourself. The Holy Spirit can't speak to you. I mean, you are this, you are that. You can't even allow anybody to just talk to you anyhow. You see yourself highly rated and highly this, highly that. You know, <laughs> the Lord spoke to me that so many ladies will not marry. He said because of pride. That's just the truth. Some certain brothers are coming. They said, you know, we ask them, is there any man? They said, there is no man. It's not because there is no man. No. It's because of pride. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Don't let time run or run off you before you make your change quick. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So come off your camel. The Bible says Rebecca came down from her camel to be able to meet Isaac. You may never meet that Isaac in so far as you are still on that camel. 
Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So humility will always give you your place. Glory be to God in highest. So the Bible talks about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the highest, and the pride of life. 1 John 2 verse 15. What is it that God is comprehensively bringing to us? He said these are the major elements of life, ladies and gentlemen, that bring about retrogression in people's lives. Now I want you to understand the first fall, which became, ladies and gentlemen, the incorporation of what I call the Adamic nature inside mankind, ladies and gentlemen, came on the note of these three things. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Every time you see these three components, ladies and gentlemen, it is worldliness at work. And ladies and gentlemen, the combination of these three elements, I mean their coexistence, is what the Bible calls worldliness. Oh, glory be to God in the highest. Now, in the first fall of mankind, in Genesis chapter number 3, you will agree with me. Genesis chapter number 3, the Bible says, sit and ask them, did God tell you not to eat of every fruit? Because one thing the devil, you know the introduction of the devil here, the Bible says the first thing they came to attack is what God said. <laughs> so what God is doing, what God is saying, what God plans over your life is the central attack and the central focus of the devil. Don't ever forget that. So when you see the devil troubling you, it's because there is a plan on your life. No, Joseph will not be troubled if there is no vision of God on his life. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, Samson will not be troubled if there is no plan of God resting upon his life. David will never be troubled. In fact, he will have peace. His soul will never be chasing after him if there is no word of God resting upon his life. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are going through stuff, there is a plan on your life. And I'm glad to let you know in the name of Jesus, you will fulfill that plan. The word of God will come to pass in your life. Everybody lift up holy hands, begin to pray. The Lord said, I'm releasing grace right now for my word to find even implementation in the lives of my people. My plans to find execution. My plans to find establishment. Somebody pray, pray, pray. Mama, I'm seeing you praying for your child. The time has come for God's word to take effect in the life of that child. Somebody pray right now. Nikato zeprali kato zaki bradi kato. Mangala go dig zo brali garok tak zelados te zen and tedi agra karabati melam paragado shedaminda la gabralido gizanan tradiaga babrali godokta kidamandre igadoza lardok te zenamandre paligodisto zempra nigepa la doza la da kipra ningedija the plan of God finds fulfillment in your life in the man name of Jesus. I said the word of God finds fulfillment in your life. In my life, my God, and the lives of everybody listening to me in the name of Jesus. In the life of all my children, spiritual, biological, the word of God finds fulfillment. The plans of God find fulfillment regardless of the plans of the enemies. In the name of Jesus, we destroy all the stratagems in the name of Jesus and we speak in Jesus' name that the word, even I say, is rooted even in our lives. In Jesus' name. We say the word of God has even a free course in our lives and the name of the lord is glorified upon us we'll give you all the praise daddy in jesus name we pray praise the lord praise the living jesus so the devil asked them in genesis chapter number three of god's word concerning them and he said god said uh, we should every tree for the tree at the center of the uh garden god said we should not hit you know one thing don't engage the devil in a conversation it could be smarter do you understand what I'm saying? Don't engage the devil ordinarily. Now you see, you will notice one thing here, two things I want to show you. The, and the devil said, okay, the day you eat of that fruit, you will not, God knows you will not die. Because God knows the day you eat of it, you will be as God. Knowing good and evil, you will be wise as God. Ah, The Bible says, and when he looked at the fruit, and she saw that it was good. Um, do you understand what I'm talking about? The Bible says, and she saw that, she saw, that is the loss of the highest. She saw that it was good. Do you understand? And then, number two, it was desirable. Do you understand? For food. That is the lust of the flesh. And then she, she now saw that it was good to make one wise. Can you see it? That is the pride of life. I also want to be as God. Do you know that was the sin the devil did? He said, and I will be like the Most High. I will exalt my throne above the throne of God. So the Bible said they wanted to be us. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, you see, you will notice one thing. The three components of worldliness was involved. She saw that it was good. Can, can, can we please check Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 6, please? Genesis chapter number 3. I want us to see what happened to Mama Eve. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to see these three components of worldliness there. Glory be to God in the highest. Oh, yes. Can, can, can we read, please? And when the woman saw that the tree was good. And when the woman saw that the tree was good. Uh, that is was good for, food. for food. Now, yes. 
and it was delightful to look at. Now, if good for food is lust of the flesh, delightful to look at. That is lust of the eyes. Yes. And a tree to be desired in order to make one wise. That is the pride of life. You know what God is talking about to everybody here, ladies and gentlemen. This is what the devil is working out in several lives. And God is telling everybody under the sound of my voice that the devil is always willing to make sure that you are subject to this limitation. Well, you got to rise and tell the devil, devil, shut up. In the name of Jesus, shut up. I say, shut up. I'm not going to be subject to the components of worldliness. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So if you are sense ruled, you are always subject to this realm. And ladies and gentlemen, you will notice one thing. The devil completely threw them out. I want to show you one major thing here. Do you know the same temptation that came to the first Adam? The same came to the second Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus was taken to the wilderness to be tempted to the devil. And what was the first temptation? The Bible said the devil told him, he said, turn this stone to bread. Now, Jesus was fasting. A fasting man, ladies and gentlemen, a fasting man naturally needs food. He naturally needs what? A fasting man needs food. His desire centrally is food. And when somebody's desire is food, and he now came to tempt him on what he desired, now you will notice one thing. Ladies and gentlemen, he tempted Jesus on that. And look at it, ladies and gentlemen, that is the loss of the flesh. Then the Bible says the same, the same way, ladies and gentlemen, he took him to uh, the pinnacle of the temple. And then he told Jesus, you know, just, uh, you know, just jump down because he has said, you know, uh, uh, you know, he has said that he will give his angels charges over you to guide you in all your ways, this and this and that. So that is, you know what that is? That is the pride of life. The dear that I'm talking about, that just jump down. You are you, with the kind of person you are. Never, you can't fall. You are this, you are too much. Just could have said, yeah, see, I'm, God, I'm, I'm, I'm as God as well too. But what are you talking about? I'm God now. But you see, this same Jesus, uh, of course, he would have jumped. Jesus would have not fallen. Because we know he walked on waters and he never sank. <laughs> is somebody catching what I'm talking about? That is the pride of life. And then he took him to a high mountain and showed him all the glory. Showed him. That is the lust of the eyes. He said, just take a bow. So the same temptation that came to first aid and came to second aid. That's why the Bible says the same suffering, the same temptation is accomplishing all the brethren. So please understand, it's the same that is coming to everybody. But one fell and the other is too strong. Now, what was it that made the difference about that? I would just want to show you something here, ladies and gentlemen. A man who primarily lives by the flesh will fall. Please understand, the devil is smarter than ordinary men. That is one thing I wanted to see. If you are here, you are listening to me, and you are not servicing your relationship with the Holy Spirit, you are already a prey in the hand of the devil. Listen to me, no matter how humanly strong you are, no matter how moralistic you are. A lot of people go by moral principles and all that. Thank God for moral principles and thank God for the place of personal discipline. Please understand, I am not in any capacity undermining those areas. But I must let you know, Christianity is not a call to live in the power of self-decision. Christianity is a call to live in the power of the Spirit. The Bible says walk in the Spirit, not walk in the power of self-determination. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. So walk ye in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's the only way you can get over the lust of the flesh. Yes, sir. It's not the power of self-determination. Yes, Those who have made, uh, uh, how many of us have made a covenant with God? Uh, uh, you make a covenant with yourself that I will never do this again in my life. Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes. Mm. All those covenants, please forget it. Too. If God should show you the flaws of Job, you will understand. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Thank God those things have their place. But please, God has, if the devil should tempt you on those things, eh? when the devil tempted Job, don't you see how Job fell flat? How he started even causing the day he was born? How he started? Look, if God should expose you to the devil, you understand that your power of determination has no power. <laughs> if God should withdraw from the sin, your self-determination is, is, is completely flawed. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So what holds a man, ladies and gentlemen, from flaws is the involvement of God. Don't ever forget that. Now, in the case of the first Adam, there was no Holy Spirit in their life. That was why they fell flat. In the case of the second Adam, before he entered into the wilderness, the Bible says the Spirit of God came on him. That's what made the difference, ladies and gentlemen. 
That was what made the difference. That means being upheld in the power of the Spirit of God is the strength of your stability. There is no way you can be as smart as the devil ordinarily and naturally. No. The Bible says, ah, the, Bible says the day was created, Ezekiel chapter 28 from verse 14. In fact, the Bible says that it, the, Bible says, the Bible says it was created with wisdom. It was the anointed cherub that covered it. So wisdom was, a, devil was endowed with wisdom from creation. Do you understand? That's what the Bible talks about his stratagems, his, 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 his wires. That means wise schemes. Yeah? The, Bible says, the Bible says the serpent representing the devil was more subtle than every other animal. Very wise, very crafty, very cunning. And Jesus, I told you, when he referred to, to him, Jesus said, be therefore wise as serpent. He, Jesus acknowledges wisdom. So eh, please understand, to a natural man, the devil is too wise. But to a man that of the spirit, the devil is too foolish. Glory be to God. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So it takes the wisdom of the spirit out working us to be able to outsmart the devil. Do you understand? So Adam, the mistake they made was that they faced the devil with, with their natural dimensions. And they fell flat straight. But God, when Jesus wanted to face him, you will notice, be just before the wilderness for temptation, the first thing was that he was endowed by the spirit. <laughs> that means this one come forward. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when you are endowed by the spirit, you are a man of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's difficult for the devil to get you down. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So that's the reason why the second Adam was able to flood the devil. So don't ever forget that, ladies and gentlemen, it's the same lost. But ladies and gentlemen, the results are different because of endowment. So friends, for us to carry the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, victory is already on our side. And that the Holy Spirit is in your life is to tell you that it doesn't matter what the devil is doing. You will never be a victim in life. I am here talking to somebody here. In the name of Jesus, I don't care what the devil is planning. I prophesy by the mercy of the Lord. I say victory is on your side. Amen. You will live a life of triumph. You will live a life of victory. Amen. You will live a life of celebrations. Amen. I say all your enemies shall be disappointed forever. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Is somebody catching what I'm talking yes, about? Sir. Now let me now let you know this. The lost factor that is inside every man that I said that is in the soul. You know, that, that from the Adamic nature, ladies and gentlemen, that God wants us to use the life and the spirit to conquer via his word. <coughs> that lost factor, ladies and gentlemen, is in every man. And that is the reason why every man, ladies and gentlemen, needs the spirit to be able to conquer it. Am I talking to somebody here? You need the spirit to be able to do what? To conquer Oh, come on. Am I talking to somebody here? In James chapter 1 verse 13. James chapter 1 verse 13. The Bible says every man is drawn. You know, every man is, let no man say when he's tempted, that he's tempted of the Lord. For God is not tempted with evil. He cannot be tempted with evil, neither does he tempt any man with evil. He said, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away by his lust. He said, and when lust is fully conceived, he gives back to sin. And then when sin is finished, it, it produces death. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Here the Bible says every man is drawn away when he, when, of course, is drawn away by his, by, by every man is tempted when he's drawn away by his lust. So every man has lust in his flesh. Do you understand what I'm talking about? A man who does not have lust cannot be tempted. Jesus had fasted for 40 days and now he was hungry. What is the meaning of lust? Strong desire for something. Jesus desired food. He needed food. I remember the first day I tried fasting. Ah! We were, were traveling that day. I was looking at a river. I felt like flying out of the car to go and drink water in that river. Do you understand what I'm talking about? My whole body needed water and food. So you know, imagine somebody who went four days. His whole body was in need of it. He was strongly desirous of food. And then that was when the devil said, turn this stone to bread. If there was no appetite in Jesus, the devil would have not said it. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. So if Jesus had flesh, he had lost. Oh, am I talking to somebody here? Oh, Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? So, if Jesus never had lost, then he cannot show us the way to get over lost. But he was a perfect example who handled lost very well. The Bible says he was tempted in all ways, yet without what? Without sin. And the Bible says every man is tempted. He said when he's drawn away by his lost. So, for Jesus to be tempted, it simply means he has strong desire for food. But yet, he did not allow that thing to overcome him. I don't know who I'm talking to here, ladies and gentlemen. The secret of the life of Jesus and the mercy that took him over, that mercy resides with you now in the name of Jesus. So is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So what are we saying today, ladies and gentlemen? There is the place for lost. 
there is a place for strong desire. And that is what, you know, this teaching is all about. Um, we are looking at, ladies and gentlemen, the inner flaw called lust today. Now, let me let you know this. This inner flaw, you will notice that the Bible talks about uh, 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 the components of worldliness. It said the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You will see out of three, two of them, the Bible says they are lost. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Now, that is to say, whatever takes to thought simply means that this thing is primary. <laughs> it's fundamental. And that's why today we are treating covetousness. We are treating what? Covetous. Covetousness. By the grace of God, we'll be taking a break for five minutes. And I will just talk on the master key of covetousness and the effect of covetousness. If somebody understands it, and then we go to that part of overcoming it, which of course I had been talking about even earlier today, and then we pray on it, ladies and gentlemen, it clears several menus of our lives. Because covetousness also has a lot of ripple effects. And once somebody is able to get over it, you get away. Covetousness simply means a strong desire for something. It means, ladies and gentlemen, you know, a lust for something. Ladies and gentlemen, it is very important that every believer must understand this and must be able to get over it. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. So we'll converge again in the next five minutes and we'll be treating covetousness. God bless you in Jesus.